I'm sitting out in my garden. Let's talk about a subject so many of us are talking about right now, including our president making an announcement that there could be a food shortage. Is there really going to be one? I don't know. You know, did we all know what we were going to go through the last couple years? So your guess is as good as mine. Why not be prepared? Why not grow something and maybe keep some extra cans and different things around or rice or beans? You have nothing to lose. A lot of people do it, you know, just normally. They just keep things around and um, have it in case of an earthquake, a bad weather, who knows, flooding, you know, like I said, weather. Before we went through this for the past two years, as soon as I realized something was going on, the first thing I did was I went to the store. They had a big sale on a certain brand of soup. It's not, you know, it's not that it was so great or anything, but it was a good brand of soup. It was a dollar a can. And I invested over a week before the lockdown buying 150 cans of soup. Sounds crazy, but 150 cans of soup. Hey, get there good for two years. What can you do with a can of soup? Well, you got cream and mushroom, you've got tomato and basil, you've got uh, chicken and rice. I went only gluten-free on it, and this one has gluten-free. And let me tell you something, it really worked out. I begged people in the store, please do me a favor. Don't buy one can, it's on sale. All you want, buy as many as you can. And people thought it was crazy. So I go in there and buy 30 cans. I go back and buy another 30 cans. I did that all week until I stocked up on 150 cans. What can you do with a can of soup? Why soup? Well, like our channel says, Robbie and Gary gardening easy. It's an easy way to make a quick meal. That's the way I look at it. I can take a can of soup. I can go into the vegetable garden. I can grab some squash. I can grab tomatoes. I could grab collard or kale or celery or anything around the garden, chop it up. I can stir fry it basically. I can put it in a frying pan with oil or a little butter or something, cook it. Then I can dump in a can of soup. Don't even have to think about anything. If it's, if it's a chicken soup, a meat soup, you know, a beef soup, I've got that, or it could take one hamburger, I'll get back to the hamburger in a minute, but I can get all that together, dump in some soup and serve it either over rice, mashed potatoes, or eat it like it is. It's quick, it's fast, and I'm using food from my garden, and I don't have to think about a whole base. It's, it's basically making life easier. And like the hamburger, I started buying, because we do eat meat, we don't eat a lot. I can buy a big package of hamburgers. I try to get grass-fed. And then I can fry up one hamburger, you know, make it like a, like you're frying up ground meat. And then you can add that to it. Strain out the fat, rinse it, whatever way you want to do it. So one hamburger goes into the whole meal. Just one hamburger. And it works really good. I don't know what's going to be this September. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's... It's kind of odd. I, there's some people I watch on YouTube that are really good. I'm not talking about preppers, actually farmers. And they were alarmed, which made me a little alarmed because they were not even paying attention to it. And they have a big channel. I guess it's okay to say it's Haas. And they were alarmed when they started realizing what the shortage was. I mean, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, but it was like, hmm, this could be an issue. They were looking at the fertilizer. But it's multiple things, and it's not going to be now. It's going to be, if it happens, September, October, around the holidays. Now, they're talking corn. They're talking safflower. They're talking barley. They're talking wheat. So they're saying there's going to be a shortage of that, which could roll into our dog food as well. They're also talking fertilizer, and fertilizer is the big one, actually. Because with that... That goes to not just us, other countries, because we are now no longer seasonal. We here, I'm going to say the United States, but it's probably the world, don't eat seasonal anymore. I mean, when I was growing up, we had watermelon at a certain time of the year. We had cantaloupe a certain time of the year. We had corn a certain time of the year. And now, because 
of shipping and getting things from South America that has beautiful farms and stuff, we are not seasonal anymore. So we're eating fruits and vegetables of all kind all year, be it frozen or shipped in from somewhere else because their climate is different. Well, some of those places may not be growing as much as they normally grow. I'm thinking if it's not a food shortage, it could be a big rise in prices. And I'm already seeing it. I'm telling you every time I go to the store, I've got one store I go to, I'm going in and 50 cents up, 20 cents up. I'm watching things go up. Here, here's an example. Baked beans that I like. They were like $1.50. Then they were $1.98. Went to buy them the other day. They're $2.49. One can of beans, it went up in a matter of months. I like a taco sauce. It's been for the past two years, $1.12. It just went up to $1.48. That's the thing I'm thinking about. The prices are going to go up. So if there's not as much as something, what's going to go up is the prices. Somebody said to me, what good is gardening? Because you can't grow everything you need. And you know what? That's that person's opinion because there's many of you I know out there that are growing pretty much everything you need. And we grow all our greens. We grow most of our vegetables. And the only thing I was buying potatoes, but we just had potatoes last night. Beautiful potatoes from Gary's Garden. So I may not eat potatoes for a while. There are some things I can't grow enough of because some of the animals may eat something that I can't grow enough of. The whole idea is growing as much as you can because first of all, whatever you grow is going to be far better than what you're going to pick up at some of your grocery stores. A lot of it is treated. And a lot of it is, you know, treated in a way for shelf life so it can last so long. I mean, you know, you go out to your garden, you pick something, you bring it in, sit it on the counter, forget about it for two days, and what does it look like? You go to the store and you buy something, you sit it on your counter and you forgot about it, got shoved in the back, you find it a month later, and it looks like the day you bought it. Think about it. Anything that is causing a plant or something not to break down is also getting into us, and let's just say our good bacteria may not be that happy about something being introduced into us that is causing us to not break down our own food. Mix and match so you keep everybody happy, but everything you could end, end up with issues. I'm thinking right now, and it's, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking that it's probably going to be major prices going up is what it's going to probably be. And with that, you want to be able to grow as much as you can. If you're in an area that you can grow all year, like a neighbor said to me, well, what good is it growing a garden in the spring and the summer? I just looked at him and I said, we live in Southern California. And then he went, oops. The thing is, they're dealing a lot of my neighbors with gophers, squirrels. You know, the gophers are probably the worst for some. You can get rid of gophers. Grow in totes, flower pots, grow bags. Boxes. They don't even go through boxes until it starts to break down. You can wire if you wanted to. If you were determined to grow in a raised bed, you know, straight on the ground, then put some wire down there. Multiple layers of cardboard. But cardboard will break down and they will chew through. They got nice big teeth. You can get rid of gophers. Squirrels, I'm having luck with tool. So as long as the squirrels can find some food, they'll bypass anything with tool, including the deer now I have found that we have coming in our yard. They don't like the, the, the mouth, you know, the mouth on tool, so they don't touch the tool. You can grow something. Now, if you live back east where you have four seasons, you grow what you can and you freeze what you can. Tomatoes, I always tell people, grow little tomatoes. I'm not into canning. If you're in the canning, mazel tov, can all you want. I've done it and I will not do it again. The thing is, canning is great, but I freeze. So I go through my tomatoes, my tomatillos. You can slice up peppers. You can slice up squash and wash it. Put it on a cookie sheet if you're going to slice it up. Freeze it 
and then take it take the cookie sheet out of the freezer rebag it in a heavy plastic bag you know a freezer bag and put it back in the freezer and you've got all that all year if you're buying something from the store you've got that out of your freezer you can take and throw into your food so i do a lot of freezing i probably will do a lot of pickling this year you know sauerkraut pickles and i pickle um zucchini as well that's so good and that, once you get it to the stage that you want, you can put that in the fridge and you'll have that until the following season. Gee, I've got a jar of relish that's over two years old I'm still using. <laughs> it still tastes good, it's almost gone. Um, the thing is, we can do what we can do. That's all we can do. If you're gonna grow tomatoes, I have actually told people in the store, I've seen them, oh, I'm gonna buy the big, big tomatoes. And it's like, oh. That's scary. Letting me know he's on his way home. The thing is, you can do the big tomatoes and you can slice them up and freeze them, but then you're gonna only wanna use that for sauce and that's fine. But the little tomatoes are easy, easy, easy. You go ahead, you pick them, you wash them, you pick them, you freeze them, and you've got a, you've got a big bag or multiple bags in the back of your freezer all winter long. So now you've got tomatoes in the freezer, you've got vegetables in the freezer, you've got everything you need. You've got a lot. A can of soup, some box mashed potatoes if you want, some rice or beans, and you can serve it all for that. That's the thing is we can be ready for anything. And if not, we have it anyways. The other thing too is talking about cost and fertilizer that's going to drive a lot of stuff up all your potting soil i shouldn't say all most of your potting soil has fertilizer in it i don't know what they're going to do if there truly is a big shortage i'm worried more about cost look at our gas prices that just suddenly shot up i'm watching food prices go up there's times i go to order something and it's not there they don't have it why not be prepared? So we can't do everything. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if we can't do everything. If something really did happen and we couldn't get food for a while, you're gonna have something. And you know what? If you learn to grow and you have some stuff in the freezer, you're not going to starve. You may have something you don't like and you can have trading power with it. The point is, you do, we, we do need to know how to grow something. Our ancestors grew. We wouldn't be here if they didn't grow. People were growing in their backyards. They had kitchen gardens all over. It was a common thing to have, a kitchen garden. Now with cities so big, people have community gardens. Work with somebody if you can. But think about growing something, even if it's just parsley. Just think if you took a can of soup, and all you added in was some parsley. Isn't that pretty back there? All the totes on chairs. And my boxes, look at my boxes. That parsley's got enzymes and everything in it. You're gonna be adding some enzymes in, something that's not there. If you read a can of soup, you're gonna find multiple chemicals that are a preservative, but it's not just preserving it, it's stopping enzymes. Remember, we're eating that. So we're stopping our enzymes. So if you, added in something you grew, carrots or something that you grew, you're now adding the enzymes back in for yourself. That's what you're doing. I'm going to be prepared. My mother said, are you going to have enough food for us? I believe you may I'll have enough food for them. So yes. And, and if somebody needs one of my neighbors or something, I'm going to have, I really think the biggest thing is going to be is cost. We're going to watch food uh, prices go up among everything else. Dog food, just products in general. Uh, it, it's, everything's gonna go up because of gas prices too. So garden and the thing, and also here's the thing, here's the cardboard boxes where they see them. There's the cardboard boxes I'm growing out of. I'm not a promoter of cardboard boxes. I happen to like my totes. See all my totes on chairs, they last for years and years. Keep in mind, even the raised beds you buy, the big fancy plastic ones or wooden ones or galvanized steel, they all break down, okay? But you know I've talked about totes. Why? Because let me see, that one tote, 
I can have that thing filled in a matter of minutes with stuff around the ground. Just go to the ground, pick up leaves and stuff, fill it up three quarters to the top. And then maybe if you have nothing, go buy a bag of cheap potting soil. You don't have to buy the most expensive. If you want to, that's fine. You can want to buy organic, buy organic. Because the point is everything that you've put in there from the ground is already going to break down and make you the best soil you can possibly get you'll be making mother nature's soil. So while your plant is growing, it's going to be making soil in there. If you can find a flower pot or a rock, lift up a rock, grab a handful of soil from under that, and you'll be throwing microbes as well as earthworms in there. Even if you don't see them and you got a flower pot out there growing, there's probably earthworms, tiny ones or eggs. They'll hatch. And if you're outside, they'll find their way in. The cardboard boxes, like I said, they're going to break down. I got a tomato in one of them the tomato plant may break down into the ground and continue to grow and if it doesn't it's gonna to have to be composted here in Southern California tomato plants can go for many years in the cardboard box it won't unless it finds its way into the ground which it can because if you've got them in pots they'll send their roots through the pots into the ground so it might just do fine there I also am going to grow lots of squash back there and like I said take your small squash if you're growing an abundance of them, especially zucchini, slice it up. That's something I wanted to talk about, squash. Let's talk about that for a minute. Squash. There's summer squash and winter squash. Summer squash is like your yellow zucchini, your yellow, your zucchini, your yellow squash. There's a few different other varieties. Those are summer squash. What is that? Those are squash you can eat any time of the year, starting in the summer. As soon as they're there, you can eat them. You can eat the flowers. You can eat the tiny zucchinis. You can eat them anytime you want. And you don't really want to get them that big, which I do. Okay? They're ready to eat now. And yes, a zucchini can store for many, many months in the house if you let it get to torpedo size. The thing is, you'll have to cut it and then bake it. It won't be the same as the soft, sweet, wonderful young zucchini. But you can store them that way. Your spaghetti squash all your other squash, your kabochas, your delicatas, they grow to the point where you wait till they are ready to be harvested. It's that little thing that twines around by the branch there, the tentacle, the tendril, I should say. Once, once that turns brown, then the squash is ready. That's the difference. You're actually waiting for something to ripe, kind of like a watermelon. You're waiting for the watermelon, the tendril to turn brown, I usually wait one to two weeks after it turns brown to make sure it's real sweet, but you can do it any way you want. And then you eat it. Well, it's kind of the same way with spaghetti squash. You're actually waiting for it to be ripe, where a summer squash, you can eat it any time. Hint, I have used spaghetti squash green because we don't like it. We grew so much. I started picking them when they were small, slicing them up, frying them with butter. They were, they were fine. Not as good as zucchini, but they were fine. But the whole idea is one, you have to wait till it's right, and the other one, you can eat it any time. So think about what you want to grow. And then maybe in the winter, you can grow some parsley, walking onions, basil, or something in the house in a window. I've got a friend that grew tomatoes in the winter in a window. Yeah, I mean, he only got a couple tomatoes, so it's, it's not like you're going to get a big harvest out of it. But think about something you can grow and you can store. Think about maybe getting some extra food. So when you go to the store, grab a couple extra cans and put it away. I got a cabinet under the TV. I told Gary, there's really nothing under there. I'm going to start storing a couple cans of soup and stuff that I can have for later. Why not? I mean, I have nothing to lose. If the prices drop and everything comes down and there's more food than I need, I've got soup. I've got it ready in case I catch a cold or something and I don't feel like going out. So I hope I've given you some thought. I'm not alarmed. I'm, I'm just trying to get a lot of things planted. And a lot of this is, some of you called it demonstration. It's not really demonstration. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy experimenting and seeing what's going to work good. And I've got so many cardboard boxes. So why not grow that way, like I said? And then no matter what, the cardboard's gonna break down, everything's gonna break down there, and I'm gonna have free soil next spring. And that's something to think about. And if you're on the East Coast and your growing season's only three or four months, then you should be fine in a cardboard box. Even if it breaks down, leave it all winter, snow will bury it, and come spring, shovel it up, put it in a tote, a raised bed, 
grow bag if that's what you're into or back into a cardboard box. So I hope I gave you some food for thought. I'm gonna get in because it's gonna be a hundred, they said, or a little bit more. Got everything looking really good and anything I'm concerned about, I might throw an old t-shirt on top of, you know, take a couple tomato steaks, throw an old t-shirt, give it a little extra shade. And we're supposed to cool down in the next few days for a few days. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Yeah, I think I better go get breakfast.